So uh, today I'm going to jump into some of the content of the, the new book. And so the premise of the new book is called The Superconscious, or well, the, the title of the new book is The Superconscious Path. And uh, the whole premise of this is to build on what uh, You're Not Broken covered and help people understand there are two paths you can be living in. And so the, the first principle is that your life flows like water uh, along the path of least resistance. And that's a, a really, a really good principle. So your, your life is going to flow like water along the path of least resistance. So, so the first thing I want you to imagine is that, you know, like, like water is, is flowing, uh, you know, think about you down at the beach and some water is making its way, uh, you know, out to the, to the sea. And you'll be able to see that it moves uh, in a certain way, which seems random, but it's actually the least resistant path. See, we all know this. There's gravity applying itself or pulling. We don't know if it's a pushing or pulling, but, but there's gravity on the, on the water and it's going to flow towards uh, and, and down back to the lowest point. We know if we uh, drink, uh, uh, create a different trench that the water will change. So this is a very important thing to understand is that in our life, we have time that keeps moving, right? And the time has got that, that pressure that we don't really understand, just like the gravity. So we have that pressure on us. And so we're going to be flowing, just like the water is going to be flowing, like the water keeps on moving, so does time and so do we. So we keep on moving. Where we end up moving to depends on the structure of our life. Now, when we think about the, the water, we understand that the structure is made up of sand right so it's made up of sand and, and that creates the little you know uh the the riverbed for the water to go across right so we understand that well, well in our life we have the same structure as well uh, it's just not made with sand it's made with our own consciousness and our consciousness will will flow towards wherever we create the structure and i just think that's such a beautiful first premise uh, and it's one that we must always remember, if we're not flowing towards what it is that we want, then, then we must change the structure. So structure is the, is the second uh, principle that, uh, that we go through in the book, uh, which is really nice. So structure creates a path of least resistance. So structure creates the path of least resistance. Now, structure. So many people go, well, I've never heard it used in this term. So structure creates the path. A structure is anything working together that has more than two points of information, right? That is really important to understand. So when we have a structure, uh, and I've got some um, uh, some really nice imagery here. I'll show you some of the imagery from the, uh, the book. One second. Let me just uh, grab some of this because it's really good to visually see this and understand that there are there are literally two different structures or two different paths that that we can be in, you know, there, there, there just, there just is. And that's, that's just important to know that in your life, you're either in one or the other. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you're either in one or the other. You, you, you just can't be in both. You just, you just, you simply can't. And so any time you're not flowing to what it is you're creating, you're either stuck. So think about a stuck structure. It's like, you know, the water has pulled, right? It's pulled. There's too much resistance around it. The water is no longer flowing to, to what it is that it wants to go to. Or you're flowing to unconscious uh, wounds, right? So here's the, the graphic. Let me, let me pull this graphic up so that you guys can see it. And it's not like this in the book. This is what I sent, uh, you know, to the book. Uh, to the book um, publishers. So you, you can see here, can everyone, can everyone see that? So we have the first uh, structure here, the self-conscious structure, which has a current reality, a desired reality, and an unconscious um, wound. And so one aspect of us wants to change and have everything be different. And another one wants to stay the same based on the wound. Okay, so there's those, those two things. And, and I just want you to imagine these like two little, you know, uh, you know, like trenches dug. Either your current reality is flowing 
to this point, to the desired reality, or it's flowing back to the, the unconscious wound. The water, just really, just type in ES if you get this, the water can't go down both paths at once. It either flows down to desired reality or flows down to, to staying the same in your unconscious wound. It can't split its molecules up and be half-half, right? It goes one way. And that's really, really important. Really important. That's just one of the, um, the examples of the book. But, but, but I just want you to think about that in your mind as we're, we're here, is that the water going down, it, can't, it has to choose which path as it, as it goes down. And that's the same with you, is you've got you to you gotta choose which, which path that you're, you're in. And the great thing is, is we get to be in that choice. And today we're going to talk about creative visualization and how to, to get into that choice. But like, that's very important, isn't it? To understand is that, that you actually get to be in that. So the next big point from the book that you guys are going to love uh, some of the new stuff in this book, right? The next big part is your conscious focus creates your structure. Your conscious focus creates your structure. And that is all aspects of your, of your consciousness, your, your, your self-conscious, unconscious. The way you are focused creates your structure. The structure creates the flow. And we're in control of that. We're in control of that. And that's really, really important. How we, how we make sure that all of our conscious is focused is we go through a daily morning ritual. And so if you leave your consciousness to, to its, own, uh, its own focus, it will focus on survival. That's what it will do. It will go down the unconscious path and go, let's just focus on staying alive and, and focus on that, right? That, that's what we'll do. And if you want more than just to keep repeating the past and staying alive, you must actually proactively engage your consciousness in new end results. And that's what choices are. And that's about shifting to the super conscious path. Because if you don't do anything, you'll be like the, the millions of people out there just living the unconscious path. And the unconscious path is the normal path. It's, it's focused on survival. It's focused on unconscious wounds. It's focused on staying the same. And for us here, we're actually going, well, that's, that's great, but we want to do life a different way. And so you, you must every day put your conscious focus in, uh, on the end results that you want to create and do visualization, do the wisdom process, maybe even do recode uh, to, to make sure that that's there. So the, 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 the next point is this, is that it is a choice. You can live in either the, the problem solving structure or the creative structure like this is a choice it, and it's yours it's like every day if you go back to that diagram every day the current reality resets itself right it resets itself because current reality is like the current of the water and every day you're either focused on staying the same or you focus on a new desired reality that has your heart that you love that you want to see manifest and every moment you you stand on the precipice of this choice do i focus on my unconscious wound or do i focus on what i really want do i focus on staying the same or do i focus on creating something new and and you make that that conscious choice and if people ask you know they want to do all the fancy things right they come learn the intuition program, they do the creative, they, you know, all of these things, and they move on to the next one. But the most important thing is the morning routine and doing your choices and getting into that, that creative structure. Like that is the, you know, you, you know, the 80, 20 rule, that's, that's the, you know, that's the 80, 20 of the 80, 20. That's the one thing that you got to do. And, and what's so funny is that choices and lenses are the one thing you must do every single day is make your choices, visualize how you want to be. And I'm going to take you through it today. It's the most important thing. But how many of us have an unconscious that for some reason can find an infinite amount of reasons and stories of why you don't have time to do your morning routine and to do your choices? Isn't it? It's, it's, quite, re it's quite remarkable you know, how the unconscious can, can never find 15 minutes 
to to do its choices. It blows me away. Isn't that funny? Like, you, you, it's a it's a simple process that you you learn in the book. Have choices about what your heart wants to create every morning. Tune into them. Feel into them. Allow yourself to notice if there's any resistance. Remove the resistance. Take the action. It, it's like it is so crucial. And if you build that habit, you will live the the creative part. So really, really good one there. Uh, let me skip a couple. You'll get them in the book. So I want us to do some uh, some some process in a second. So this is this is a really nice two points. I'll give you two two of the points at once. Um, by the way, when you get the book, we're going we're right on page one hundred and sixty three. I can't wait to give you guys this book. It's going to blow your minds. Okay. So uh, the creative structure is focused on what you desire. There is a tension between your desire and the current reality, and this activates your superconscious superpower. Think about that. So the, the creative structure is focused on what it is you want to create and noticing where you are now. The tension between those two points has to resolve itself and pulls in genius wisdom. Part of the book is to teach everyone their super conscious superpower. It pulls it in. It invents new ways. It, it's, it's really, really, you know, it's really good. That's the creative structure. Now, if you see the second half of, of what uh, I wrote in there is the problem structure is focused on the unconscious wound. The tension between that unconscious wound being true and current reality activates unconscious strategies to avoid that pain. So if you have a wound of not being good enough or not being perfect enough or not being worthy or, or not understanding the world or, or feeling like you don't belong, whatever the wound is, right, that wound will activate strategies to avoid that. So someone, a friend of mine, will, will, will focus on the wound of, you know, not being dominant enough and, and, and feeling powerless. And so then they'll take actions to try to prove they're powerful. But what they really want is to have a loving relationship over here. You see that? So that's the difference is that you can always, once you understand uh, the, the aspect of you that feels wounded, you can just watch yourself consistently, uh, you know, try to avoid that pain and taking action. You know, somebody who's, who's uh, got the need to be perfect, they, uh, they're, they're so scared of um, criticism that they don't even have choices in their life, you know? They don't even, they're so scared of it. Somebody that, that's, that's got the wound of not being worthy, instead of going for what they would like, they're always focusing on trying to help someone else. You see that? So, so and it's, uh, let me just share, uh, you know, the, the copy of the, the book here. So it's it's a bit of a summary here in the book of some of the things that go on. And so it's it's here. The creative structure is focused on what you desire. The tension between your desire and the current reality activates your superpower. Now, the problem structure is focused on the unconscious wound. The tension between the, the wound and the current reality activates unconscious strategies. And, and that is just bloody, bloody crucial. It's it's just it's just crucial. And, uh, and I want you to really just sort of sit with that. The problem structure, you never fully let go of the wound. It's what orientates you. So, uh, the, you know, there's, there's nine orientations with nine wounds, and each one of them has, uh, 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 has a superpower. And so you live in two different worlds. In fact, let me, let me jump to this part of the book. I think you guys are going to like it, okay? So every single way that we, we think that we are wounded has actually uh, created our superpower, right? This is, this is, and there's nine orientation points that correlate with nine wounds and nine um, superpowers. So uh, let me go through the, the first one. So the first one has the, uh, the wound or the, the orientation of the perfectionist, right? The perfectionist has a wound uh, based on feeling bad or defective or evil or corrupt, and their desire is to be good, virtuous, and have integrity. 
the unconscious strategy to create safety by being good and not make mistakes. Now, what's interesting is they have this superpower of being able to see things as they should be. One of my business coaches has this. And, you know, he wants to write a book and he wants to do art and he wants to do all of these things. But he, but he just is always talking about them and never does it. it. Instead, he's got these businesses and he has an eye for detail. He's, he, he's amazing, like crazy. He bought this business for three million two years ago, uh, added, uh, used finance, so only put down 200 grand of his own money, bought it for three million. And within three years, he did a few things and sold it for 17 million bucks paid the bank back their couple million dollars and was laughing at me how he took it for, he put 200 grand in and made 17 million. And I'm just there like, you are insanely brilliant. And he's, he's put it all in a book, right? But he's so scared. He got, he, he sent the book to like 10 of us. I read it, gave him some feedback and he was so terrified of the feedback from one of our buddies that he never released the book. Last time I caught up with him, he, you know, wants to, you know, so it's a, it, it's really interesting, right? So, so you, you see it, right? The perfection on one side, but on the other side, you know, not, not actually, uh, you know, doing what they really want. Uh, all right, let me skip through because there's a bit of words here to the second orientation. Where is the second one? Yeah, in the book, we explain uh, all of the orientations in far more detail, and it's it's really good. Anyway, so the second one is the helper. The superpower is, is knowing uh, others' needs. The wound is based on feeling unloved and unwanted and fear of ending up alone. Their basic desire is to feel loved. And the unconscious strategy is to make everyone else happy. You see that? So... So they fear that they that they're going to be you know that they're not they're not worthy of love that they don't they can't just have love they must help or or do something for someone else to to then earn earn the love and uh, in that they they get the superpower of knowing what other people need they they are amazing leaders amazing uh, amazing uh, leaders actually they they always know what others need they're great organizers. Uh, but they can lose themselves because they their superpower uh, is about knowing what others need, but their wound is, well, I need to be needed to feel loved, you see? And so, you know, another, another friend of mine who I know lives in this orientation is always helping everyone else and has a lot of people around them that always need lots of help. But when it actually comes to do something for themselves, they 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 never do it they they always go through this oscillation of i'm helping everyone it feels so great to help everyone oh now that now i'm burnt out and need self-care there's no time for me and they just all they do is they slow down a little bit and then they go back to helping everyone else and they just go on this oscillation and it's it's not until uh the helper realizes that the first person they must help is themselves uh they never get to ignite their their superpower so what, why I'm sharing this with you is that the, the, the superpower is created out of your unconscious wound. And, and what this means is that you're not actually broken and we don't need to go save our kids. And we just need to let them go through the process of uh, creating personality by, by finding how, you know, they, they feel incomplete and they're not broken. It's actually realizing that's a part of us and that that's there, but we get to engage it in a different way. We engage it in a different way and we use the superpower. So, you know, uh, my friend writing, writing uh, who's, who's great at business and writing these books and, and, and doing his art, he just needs to engage he's, he's, and go out there and use that same perfection to, to the same way and to go out there and to, to, to create that art and to write the books. And it will, it will bloody be perfect. You know, uh, a lot of our courses and stuff that Hannah, with she, who has the genius of perfection, she's all in on making them perfect. It wouldn't happen if it was just me. You know, it's just brilliant. She's brilliant. And she makes great, beautiful products that, that, 
that work and and you know there's everything's right it's it's amazing so so do you see that everyone like there's two sides to it there's this the the superpower side and then there's the other the unconscious side okay so the third is the performer superpower of influence the the wound is based on feeling worthless without value unless they're achieving and being seen for their achievements so the basic desire is to feel worthwhile accepted and desirable and their unconscious strategy is to work really hard to be successful and, ach and achieve what uh, is impressive to others. They want to be impressive. And so that their, their wounds. So, so this is the one that I uh, uh, assume I orient to the most. And so on the, the low side, you're always trying to do stuff based on how do other, what do other people think about that? But you actually then have this ability to know what to say to motivate and influence other people. And so that's your, that's your superpower. So these are where a lot of the influential motivators uh, get their superpower from. And it's funny, that same buddy that I'm talking about who has the perfection wounds always uh, go, oh, it's amazing how you can just get on video and know what to say. And I'm like, it's amazing how you can just look at a business and make it work and turn 200 grand into 17 million in three years. And he's like, ah, oh, I wish I could do what you could do. I'm like, whatever. Okay, so the next one, uh, emotion. Uh, so the fourth orientation, the romantic superpower is emotion. And, and they understand feelings at, at, at such a deeper level than the rest of uh, the orientations. And their, their woundedness is based on a feeling like they don't belong. So they're always trying to feel like, what would it be like to belong? They, they sometimes even feel like they're born in the wrong family or that they're not even human. And their basic desire is to find themselves and have their significance and create an identity. And so their unconscious strategy is to find themselves and live true to their uniqueness. So I'm not gonna go through all the nine actually, it occurred to me that the point's been made is that there's there's two sides to every wound does that make sense there's two sides and we must really get that is that you're either in the super conscious path and you're activating your your higher side or you're you're buckling to the tension of your unconscious wound okay and those are the two paths right you can either go down each one and what we must do is choose what it is we want to create and know that there is a tension in there and we don't know how we're going to do it, right? We don't know how we're going to make that thing work, but we will figure it out. And we must not let our unconscious strategies stop us from taking the right action. So for example, the four that I've talked about, the first one with the perfectionist, they must realize that as they go for what they want, they're gonna feel like it's not perfect and that it's not right and that it's not good and, that, and, and they're, they're gonna do all of these things and they're gonna be terrified of failing. Now, if they let that overtake them and not take the action, then they just, they buckle to the wound, right? But if they stay focused on what they want to create and go for it, their fear of being judged and failing means they won't fail. They hate it so much that they create beauty. Does that make sense? Can everyone get that? Like they're so worried about failing that they won't. They, they, they're so worried about being judged. It's so painful that they won't. They, but they have to risk that they can and they'll get feedback and they'll hate it and they'll feel like running away to but if they stay in the tension and that's the key you know with with my orientation the third orientation is if we if we do so on two sides on one side of us we want to be impressive and on the other side of it we have what we want to create as we go for what we create we have a fear that no one is going to find this worthwhile or impressive or good you know we're just going that no one's going to care about this and so our tension is to run away and do what we think everyone else will care about but if we stay in there guess what everyone starts caring about the thing that we go for and i've got no better example than the super conscious work because <laughs> i used to just do marketing and I was doing it because I thought it was impressive to others. And it really wasn't that impressive in the end. 
But then when I took a big leap into the superconscious world and no one was talking about superconscious until I did it, right? Right. No one was talking. It was like it, it wasn't talked about. It was a uh, it wasn't there. And I had to risk and I got called a woo woo and a this and a weirdo and all of these things. But because of that risk that I took, when my uh, unconscious wound got turned on my super, I, I figured out how to make everyone go, wow, this is actually good stuff. Does that make sense? And it's so and so the book is about helping everyone to to take the jump into their superpower and live the super conscious path that's what it's about that's what it's about because when you do it will in, it will first terrify you and it will continue to terrify you because your your wound could be true but you will never let it be true and it will it will pull in uh your highest genius and it's incredible to watch but 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 it takes it takes courage you know it takes courage and so back to these last um few principles is um being all in is necessary and it takes courage very important you must in order to truly engage your superpower and live the superconscious path you must become okay 100 percent with the worst case scenario you know every single one of those orientation points has an absolute worst case scenario of being imperfect or being unloved or being a misfit and being fully rejected or, or no one caring about your work, like they all have a worst case. You must become okay with the worst case. You must return to innocence and, and to refocus your structure. Next, uh, and you, you'll learn about this more in the book, is everyone has a superpower. Everyone has a superpower. Just the people that are truly activating the depth of their superpower risk their wound being true. The more that they risk, they go for what they want. The more they go for what they want. The more there is the risk of their deepest fear being true. And because of the way our consciousness seems to work, that fear means that we then create magic. But we live with these two worlds. We either run away and you know avoid the wound or we go for it. Oh.